What's up everyone, my name is Mr. Smith and you're watching Top Speed Needs. In this series, we're going to be going over all the most important and relevant automotive news and just kind of giving you guys an understanding of what's really going on in the automotive world all in under 10 minutes. Now before we start this video, I do want to say that I am very excited to start this journey with you guys as I hope you are too. And with that being said, let's get into your Top Speed Needs. Now starting off, we're going to go over probably the biggest story right now in automotive news being the new 2024 redesigned Ford Mustang. Now when it comes to the new Mustang, one thing that a lot of people, including me, were worried about was the push towards electrification and the potential hybrid option in the Ford Mustang. Something like a twin turbo V6 instead of the classic 5.0 liter V8. But I am very, very happy to report that Ford did in fact, for the GT model of the Mustang, keep the 5.0 liter V8. And not only that, but they went from 450 horsepower in the outgoing model to 480 horsepower in a Mustang GT. This thing is crazy. Along with that, the Mustang GT will still be offered in not only a manual transmission, but also a 10-speed automatic. So if you like shifting gears yourself, if you do in fact want to save the manuals, there's an option for you. But the thing is, that's only if you want the GT version. That or the model we'll get to in a second. Unfortunately, with the new Ford Mustang EcoBoost, which still has a 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder, making 310 horsepower, due to low demand, the manual transmission is no longer an option. Now, me personally, I'm pretty sad about this, but I'm not really surprised. Obviously, they gotta make some sort of profit. And if they aren't selling EcoBoost Mustangs in a manual transmission, they probably aren't gonna be selling them very much. But when it comes to a Mustang that has a manual transmission, not only do we have the new GT, but we got something even better. Appearing to replace the Mach 1, we now have something called the Ford Mustang Dark Horse. This thing, as I said previously, is insane. To start off, the new Ford Mustang Dark Horse makes 500 horsepower reported by Ford and comes standard with a manual transmission. Although, if you want the faster option, you would go with the 10-speed automatic. Along with that, the Ford Mustang Dark Horse not only looks a lot cooler than the GT, which by the way, for the first time ever, as you can see here, actually looks different from the front than the EcoBoost. Has a little bit wider of a grill, a little bit more sporty of a look. But the Dark Horse seriously does look all around just like a cooler version, essentially, of the GT, of the Mach 1. Along with that, it comes with Brembo brakes, of course, a stronger, improved camshaft, rear axle lube, auxiliary coolers for the engine oil, and a lighter, better radiator, all of which make it so you can push this Ford Mustang Dark Horse into the higher rev range without having to miss a beat. If you thought the Ford Mustang couldn't get any cooler, you now also have the ability to rev your engine from your key fob. No, I'm not joking. Although, honestly, I wish you could do even more than that. Along with that, it comes with an electronic drifting brake, so you can kind of spin your car around a corner, along with a dual digital gauge cluster that, according to Ford, was inspired by a fighter jet. So if you're like me and you love Mustangs the way I do, I'm sure you're gonna be excited for 2024 the same way I am, and I'm very excited to see what comes next. Take a break from the news, let's go over today's Top Speed Needs Automotive Tip of the Day. Do not accidentally leave your sunroof open before a massive storm. It's not funny, especially when you have cloth seats. Not a fun thing to have to clean up. Anyways, let's get back to the news. Switching continents real fast, we're going to be going over a different type of horse. A slightly faster horse. One that's being described as Ferrari's new, take this, four-door sports car. Their naming, not mine. That being the new Ferrari Parasangue. Yes, that's how you say it. Don't correct me in the comments. Finally, Ferrari has come up with their own competitor for the Lamborghini years and to enter the crossover market with their new four-door sports car that is honestly really insane. Although there's something confusing about it, which I'll get to in a second. The new Ferrari Parasangue comes with 715 horsepower and 528 pound-feet of torque coming out of a naturally aspirated 6.5 liter V12. That, of course, is inside a four-door sports car. To clarify, not an SUV, although it's trying to compete with this. Again, their words, not mine. Along with that, for those of you who like to accelerate off the line at record speed, 80% of its torque is going to be available at 2100 RPM, meaning that it's going to be just a fair amount faster than my 2007 Honda Civic. Honestly, I was surprised when I heard that number, but apparently there's somehow a way to beat this thing. Now, one interesting thing about this compared to the Urus, which I was honestly pretty surprised about, is the fact that although the Lamborghini Urus has only about 641 horsepower, which again is a big number, and 626 pound-feet of torque, and also weighs up like three to 400 pounds more than the Parasangue, it somehow has a faster zero to 60 time of about three seconds versus the Parasangue's 3.3 seconds. How that works, especially considering the Parasangue appears to be a little bit more aerodynamic, as you can see, I'm not really sure, 
oh, you know what? I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to hope that the number is correct. And I'm going to be very, very excited to see this thing actually on the road. Now, one thing I find interesting is that the new Lamborghini Euros cost only about $225,000 versus the $400,000 that the Pura Sangue costs. But if you want something that's going to be faster overall and can probably reach a much higher top speed, at least to some degree, you're going to want to go with the Pura Sangue. But if you honestly you want to spend a little bit less, still get a great car and be a little bit faster off the line and beat a car that is $200,000 more almost, the Euros is going to be your best friend. Trust me, it will not let you down. Now going back to the States and sticking with the naturally aspirated engine theme of today's video, there is some news that I have to tell you that it's going to be partially sad, but partially awesome. That being the introduction of one of the new last call units of the Dodge Charger called the Dodge Charger King Daytona. Let's talk about why this thing's so insane. Essentially becoming the sort of Dodge Charger super stock that we never got, the new Dodge Charger King Daytona has about 807 horsepower, which if you're not exactly sure, is a lot more than my 2007 Honda Civic EX. Like, a lot more. Along with that, making this thing pretty rare and most likely a collector's item in the future, it's going to be limited to about only 300 units. And along with that, in terms of features, it comes with a built-in power sunroof, a Harman Kardon sound system, and, get this, built-in navigation for when you're going across the country at 200 miles an hour. Now, being a Dodge Charger, that of course has to be branded the most it physically possibly can, this has a satin black decal that says King Daytona on the rear back fender, a satin black spoiler, a satin black hood, and satin black roof graphics. Because of course, it wouldn't be a Dodge Charger if it didn't have all of those things. And being the American Power House is, of course it has to have massive chrome wheels, because of course, why wouldn't it? Making this thing the pinnacle of four-door American muscle cars, for the time being at least. Now, although I'm very sad about the fact that they're discontinuing the Charger and the Challenger replacing it with this thing, I am very happy that they are releasing the last call models, kind of putting it out of its misery that was never misery to begin with in kind of a more distinguished fashion. I also think it's a pretty nice conclusion to the whole Dodge era of muscle cars that we've seen over the last 50 to 70 years. And if they were to discontinue the Charger and Challenger like they are doing now, I feel like this would in fact be the way to do it. Now that being said, thank you so much for watching this episode of Top Speed Needs. If you like this video, feel free to send it to your friends. If you're new here, which I know you all are, considering this channel is literally brand new, it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe to stay updated. And with that being said, come back next time for your Top Speed Needs.